And joining me on the podcast is Vadim Alexander, Head of Healthcare at SP Angel. You right, Vadim? How are you doing, Justin? Good. Healthcare, should you say, not healthcare. Um, sorry, I tripped over my tongue there. It's going to be chilly. Do you know what? It's going to be chilly now. I don't know, you know what it's like where you are, but the, it's yeah. the winter setting in. Definitely. And, uh, Definitely. and generally, you know, November, December, December especially is a good month. Uh, the end of November is a good month for the markets. Uh, but I am annoyed. I do a daily podcast on macro and micro news. I'm annoyed by Labour's budget. And I just think it didn't help really at all. I mean, there was a relief rally in AIM. But look at how AIM's reacted to those since. So we had a re- relief rally in AIM because they didn't completely remove, which people were worried about, didn't completely remove business relief, which is inheritance tax uh, loophole. Yeah. There. Um, and so we it rallied. Look at that, four percent in the day there. But now it's just mm. it's a, yeah, it's, yeah. I've look where we come from. This is this is back going back to you know twenty twenty four. So it rallied up the sort of um, it, that's a technical bull market the eighty three, and then come all the way back. Sometimes scared the bull down to a low, which goes back as far as December. Yeah. And then we had the budget it was relief. Oh, she hasn't scrapped um, you know, uh, business relief, uh, which is coincidental. And then it's just rolling over a bit now, so it's a uh, a little bit annoying. I just is that the blue? Bit... Is the blue the fifty day average and the red two hundred? The blue is the fifty day. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. And the, and the well, at least we're day, yeah. we seem to be crossing the fifty, which is at least the start. Well, it's not now. It's back below. It, it hit its head on that and then came yeah. back down. So yeah. um, it's yeah, it's it's annoying there. But um, yeah, but I def- just think they're disingenuous. They're talking about you know they're supporting workers when they're almost like saying uh, if you're the owner of a small business, you're not a, a worker, which is like they are the backbone of this economy. Our economy, five point five million small and medium sized businesses, and many of the business owners work the hardest of all the workforce. But then now they'll be tackled with you know national insurance, increased wages. I think this is not a growth policy. You're literally strangling business. It's, it's ridiculous. So um, I'm I'm a bit concerned about what's going to happen here. But um... well, but just just so kind of now we've got two major macro things behind us, irrespective of you know how good or bad, like and or perfect or not perfect they are. You know the uh, the the two things that were holding people back without question um, from you know from the summer was these two things: the budget and the U.S. election. Now they're done. Everyone can at least make plans accordingly and. I genuinely feel like it's a big help to have them behind us. It's true the budget wasn't perfect. It's true some people debate whether Trump is good or bad for the UK. But irrespective, um, the fact the uncertainty is behind us. And I do think, you know, well, in the US, the it, we, we have already seen the Trump government has already rallied, caused a massive rally in shares there. Um, and if that continues, well, then we will inevitably get a spillover effect from that because assets here are already cheap. Uh, And people are already starting to look across the Atlantic. We're seeing some funds, um, U.S. funds, look here to buy stocks. So even in small caps. So that's a good start. Um, Yeah, it's it's good news. But you know what? Look at that. It's the FTSE 100. Look at that red line. 200-day movie average down, crossing below it. Hasn't done that since February. Now, there is a rumor that Trump... What people do, I think... Well, people do understand. Some people do. Uh, Trump was talking about 60% tariffs on China, 10% tariffs on the rest of the world. Now, it's inflationary. It doesn't help anyone at all. But these are bargaining positions of his, you know. And he did this for France before, and they had a, they had a chat with uh, Macron. And I think he made a free trade deal come out of it, basically. That's all he wants. He wants, basically, free trade deals. Uh, and mm-hmm. uh, Europe, I think, you know, it puts higher tariffs on America than America does in Europe. So... He you know, just wants fair play. He doesn't want to see America. You know, it's America first, and so it is a bargaining tool. I don't. I, I said this in the podcast. I think the bark is worse than the bite. I think you know, mm-hmm. it come out. He won't put sixty percent tariffs on China. I mean, he, he, he'll intend to if it, unless they negotiate. You know, so um, so it's just negotiations, isn't it? You know, so but uh, like I said, if he does go ahead, it's not going to help us at all uh, with our, our trade because they are. I think they are the biggest. Trading part, well, the single biggest trading partner country uh, is America, mm-hmm. and then the block, mm-hmm. of course. We, we trade bigger with Europe than America, but I think we got a deficit um, or surplus. I think it's one hundred and fifty billion, and they sell to us by one hundred and twenty. So, mm-hmm. you know, we don't want to lose that, and so the government need to try and strike a deal with Trump, and he is all about the deal, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, but I guess uh, so. My my only, I'm looking at this through the uh, lens of biotech small caps you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. you're absolutely right on from a macro view and i you know i said that initially was that it, it's debatable whether it's good or bad for you know a trump a trump government is good or bad for stocks and as we see here at the FTSE 100 maybe less so 
maybe in some sectors it's going to be better. Um, what, what happens in biotech, without question, is the U.S. goes first, okay? And this is because it's its own beast, right? It doesn't, it doesn't trade on the same valuation metrics as, say, revenue-generating companies or, um, uh, you know, or, or pro well, profitable companies. It, it it's not, doesn't trade on multiples. It trades on what's going on in the sentiment around biotech, right? And mm -hmm. if the sentiment is negative in the U.S. on biotech, it's not going to be positive anywhere, okay? If the sentiment changes on biotech in the U.S. and starts getting more positive and you see stocks bouncing, then it tends to spill over everywhere. Uh, and I would say that it's starting to spill over here to the UK very much quicker than it used to be. It used to take about six months when, when trends picked up there, you'd have a spillover effect onto UK biotech stocks. Feels a bit faster this time, um, but we're still not in a trend situation. Things are improving quickly there, but we're, it's still, it's hard to t say whether it's a trend or not. What we are seeing here is we're seeing some stocks bounce off their lows, which is good. Mm -hmm. Name 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 one name a, name 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 a few. If you yeah, there's a couple of tiddlers that have bounced. Uh, you know, and I, I think you and I have talked about this in the past. Is bounce, you know, a pop and drop. Uh, and yeah. I think I think that's a problem with all of AIM that we've had for the last three years. Is whenever there's liquidity, people sell into it to get out. You know, so mm -hmm. that's the drop. So whenever there's some kind of momentum or interest, it gets smothered. And we are still seeing that. But we are seeing like companies like uh, N4 Pharma. These are you know smaller, but all biotech has become. Yeah, well, I've, got, I've got to say, yeah. I've got to say, I've, I've got to point out right. The, um, pop and drops tend to happen more often on pre-revenue loss making stocks because if you are generating profits, you're undervalued. You know, you, you're backed by you know assets, cash, profits, and yeah. they're more stable. But uh, if you are, you know, like the pop and drops is pretty much, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot more about the story, the potential, the hope of what's going to happen. Yeah, than the actual what's what's happening. <laughs> so uh, so N four that's that's looking quite good actually because yeah, so it's starting it's to turn. That you can see yeah. there now above two hundred moving average under that for a while, and yeah. it, it, it's struggling to stay above it. But I like this. See this sign here. You you got a series here, of pretty much you got a the bottom here, and then you got um, higher lows, which is a good yeah. start. And yeah. then what you want to see is you know higher highs, and then if you get yeah. that, that's the start of a nice uptrend. But um, yeah, yeah. So what's happening there then? Is there anything? So anything well, that's else? it. I mean, the, to your, your very good point about how the stories of so obviously then you, you you look at the story and how how it's doing. And this is a company that, like so many biotech, smaller biotech companies in the UK, have had to bootstrap it in, in a very difficult market for the last three years. So those, those that have come through this and kind of survived, the story has evolved, right, over that mm -hmm. period, um, yet the valuation hasn't yet. And it feels like people are starting to pick up on that. And, and so how does the, how has the story evolved? So they were, you know, firmly a preclinical business, say, three years ago. Where they're now is they have two preclinical assets in big indications um, that are far more, if you like, established and moving towards an indication. So the two indications are indications being therapeutic areas, right? So the, the one indication, which is a relatively new one for them, is IBS, uh, which is a huge indication. This is, this is you know, problems with your, with your gut. Uh, and a lot of people, it's a massive indication, a lot of sufferers in it. They have um, what's an, a, a, an oral delivery mechanism for that. And as they progress that towards clinic, that's going to, in my well, in my opinion, in, in most biotech people's opinions, as you move towards clinic, you start to get your assets become a lot more valuable. And the value of the market of those assets, in this case, IBS, which is big, starts to come through in the stock. And the same thing for another indication they're in, they're in another area, which is glaucoma, which is a, a, a big eye indication. And what's different about this is that, say, three years ago, they weren't as close to establishing an indication and a program that that's, has a clear path towards clinic. And now they do. So that's the three-year change in a lot of these businesses. They, As they evolve and move forward, you know, their stories become a lot cleaner, better, more advanced. Um, and eventually, they shouldn't be valued at, you know, the price they were valued at three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I mean, differences, the trouble is now, again, there's so many things you can blame the Labour budget on, but I don't know if you saw that, uh, the Bank of England yesterday reduced interest rates, uh, but they're saying now, it's funny because Andrew Belly went through a period of saying he's going to be more aggressive with uh, interest rate reductions, 
that's been taken off the table now uh, since the Labour budget because they're saying is it maybe it's inflationary. inflationary. Yeah, they're yeah. saying it's inflationary. Yeah, and so that's annoying. So that won't help the market, so especially uh, you know micro caps uh, who are pre revenue need to raise money. It's certainly a tough environment to raise money, isn't it? You know, it, it still is definitely without question. I think you know it, it's it would be a rosy view to say that oh we're off to the races. It's risk on. No, no debate about that. Um, I do question, I mean, I'm not the central bank. <laughs> it's it's a big, big pronouncement to say that it's not going to be inflationary. But so far, we've overshot with rates. You know, soon they'll be writing letters saying, why are we under? Um, right? W wasn't the last inflation report the headline? 1. Figure? Yeah, 1.7 yeah. was, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're still slamming the brakes with rates. Literally, yeah. you know, both feet on the brakes uh, as far as rates are concerned. A quarter point does nothing here or there you know, when you're, when you're at 5%. So uh, mm. they've got a long way to go down. Um, it, it would be crazy to start raising them when inflation actually hasn't come through. You know, to, to, to think that the labor budget is so inflationary, I, I don't think it is. My opinion is it's, it's not that. Let's see the inflation first before there's any talk of rates not coming down. Because yeah. you have to remember, we're in a very restrictive rates environment. It's not normalized. This isn't. Yeah. This is not normal. You know. I, I yeah. I, I I'm I'm questioning whether it's. Uh, I think um that it's difference being you know an economist looking at the theory, and in practice being a business. And I think Rachel Reeves and Kiss Darm have never worked at a business. I mean Rachel Reeves have a big business like a HSBC or someone. Uh, you know, if you look at small and medium sized businesses, they've added costs to those businesses now. That's not going to help their growth. Okay, certain employees will get uh, pay increases, uh, but do you know what? That's probably the only pay increase they get now because they've been forced to do it, and they won't be taking any more people on these small businesses. And I can't see, uh, you know, the economy growing because of that. So, I and that's deflationary. Anything, economic and, growth will slow down if anything. You know? You're absolutely correct. If anything, this budget is not inflationary; it's deflationary because I think. When you talk about inflation, the thing that impacts it the most in the you know short term, short to medium term, is growth. So if the reason you raise rates is to slow down growth to make it mm. to take off the pressure on inflation, it, you know yeah. to 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 think that the the tax and spend element, the spend element, okay, is what I would say to to, to this is that the tax element slows the economy more than the spend element that they're spending on whatever infrastructure projects, okay, that. Yeah is not going to be anywhere near as inflationary as the slowing of growth by the tax by increased taxation and obviously with the central banks still at 5% roughly there or thereabouts you know yeah. you know, rates at 4.75% and increased taxes slow the economy yeah um well the thing is i mean it is to a certain extent slightly inflationary I mean, I mean, the, Already this week, you've had um, Sainsbury's, Marks and Spencer's, Weatherspoons saying they have to increase uh, prices because of this. So I think, well done, Labour. Uh, you've know, <laughs> spent years trying to bring the inflation down, and in one, you've got in a couple of months, and you've managed to push prices up. But, what what was know, their, what I, was I, their I rationale? That, that was, Sorry, what, what people would just um, reduce, stop spending so much. I mean, you know, people are aware of inflation now. If people, I, I don't think that people will start buying more stuff they buy less of stuff you know? exactly but justin what were they saying what was what was their rationale what, what was the just so i understand well, the, the rationale, uh, well in fact in prime the owner of primark said there's going to invest in their in their uh, uh, subsidiaries over broad uh, broad now because of tax burden tax burden basically they're gonna have to they've done three things lately but it's quite you know hard for businesses they've given a workers rights which means they've got to give sick pay from day one yeah, regardless yeah. of whether or not they they spend a lot of money recruiting people they, you may employ the wrong kind of person or the person no, no, just it. lazy git but then all of a sudden they've got sick sick workers rights so they've got that then they've raised national insurance for and um yeah yeah it's the ni and, that and, you're saying and, is going to trickle and the, living, down. And the national yeah, wage yeah. as well. The national wage has gone up as well. So yeah, yeah, they put yeah. a lot on employers in within a couple of months. And it's a national insurance and the increased um, you know, minimum wage. Yeah. That they're those two things are saying literally in fact there's one um there's a good but it's worth coming back to question time. There's a guy there who's a, who's a multiple entrepreneur billionaire, Sir Tom Hunter, and he was saying a friend of his who owns a retail um outlet, he turns over about 40 million, he owns 30 stores. He said, you know what, three of my stores now, because of national insurance and the wage going up, three of my stores are now making a loss. So I'm going to lay off people. He said, I'm going to lay off it's 30 people on each store, pretty much, for the averages. Uh, and yeah. so, but 90 people get laid off. So they, mm -hmm. they've gone from paying, those employees now have gone from paying tax and national insurance 
to being unemployed and claiming from the state. I mean, yeah. Labour have no idea. They, they think it's all good in the practice by putting all these things up, give workers a better um, wage. But what they don't understand, if there's no business to employ those workers, they're not going to get an increased wage. They're just going to go and benefit. So it doesn't make yeah. any sense, you know? Yeah, um, but, yeah. but so that's, anyway. you know, that's exactly consistent. So that, that, that I agree. See, tax, this is what I meant about tax and spend, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Treasury spending money is inflationary, okay? The government yeah. taxing people is deflationary, if you like. It slows the economy down, okay? And, and, and that's what I was asking about Sainsbury's and all those ones, because to think that they would pass on those costs in terms of food prices, I really doubt it, okay, in a very competitive environment. So that would be inflationary if they were able to do that. What I think is they're unable to do that because they'll immediately, people will swap away from them to someone who hasn't, okay? Because food prices yeah, are so quick. That, but I, yeah, but I, do you know what? I think they'll have to. Margins and supermarkets, and they're, not, not, they're thin, you know? And they've got a, well, lot, of, what I would a say, lot of people. They, they're, you know, cap, cap, they're, 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 they're human resource capital in, in, intensive, aren't they? So it's, you know, I, I don't know. Well, in fact, they're all saying it. Weatherspoon's Tim, Tim Martin there. Said so all hospitality businesses will have to put up their, uh, their prices. They'll have to. They're, they're, they're struggling yeah. already. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But that, but that is in, in effect, will not help growth. I mean, they lay people off. So you may have initial bump in inflation, but the growth will come down. Exactly. It's the laying growth, people off yeah. is what I was going to say. Is that yeah. the preference between the two? And this is what I've heard about NI. Okay. Is that what you'll do? Is just not hire anymore? Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll you'll accelerate all the programs, or you know, where people get laid off, or where they're not being, you know, they end their a temporary contract or whatever so it usually translates less into price wars as it sorry not price wars but um, into price increases because but in but more into labor so mm. it's that's what i mean about taxation normally what happens is it slows things down rather than causing inflation do you see what i mean mm. now yeah. a vat a vat increase would cause inflation of course that would you know right. but trickling through and causing food prices to rise you're right they, they but it could be bluster too, right? But my ultimate mm. point is, without question, I, I mean, I, I think there, there, there is a growth element that there's a slowing down of growth uh, yeah. in this budget. Um, and I think that's much stronger than any kind of spend element uh, from the government. Yeah. So, you know, infrastructure, which is inflationary. So I, I don't believe that it's that inflationary, which brings us back to our point. I think it's more a growth slowdown budget. And if yeah. anything, that's and deflationary. It, yeah. So we're going to get rates coming down, you know? Yeah, and infrastructure spend, by the way, the investment they're making, they seem to be favoring these pro big projects. They take years, years yeah. and years to come through. They'll probably be out of, out, of, out of power by the time they get the initial investment return on those. Exactly, uh, okay. exactly. Let's um, have a look at some other companies. We've got, you haven't got much time. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is it RQ Rock for, what's, um They popped yeah, a little yeah. bit. So they've also dropped a little bit. So look at that. Yeah, <laughs> in that spirit of companies, exactly. So N4 and Rock are very similar. You know, they're very mm. small tiddlers, but in many ways, the reason they are is because they've been hit so hard in this downturn, in you know, the biotech downturn. But again, just like N4, they've evolved their story, managed to bootstrap it, you know, and, and raise a little bit of capital at a time, get through the last three years uh, and evolve the story. And that's exactly what's happened here. You know, I think similar to N4 and it's, it, you know, I don't think it's by accident that these companies are all kind of going through this pop and drop at the same time. Uh, People are looking at these companies and saying, when can I buy them? When have they hit the bottom? And can I get them on the cheap? And I think that's where you get this pop. The drop is yeah. a whole bunch of people that are stuck in it for years or whatever that see liquidity and try to get out. But eventually that washes out. And I think that that's that trend is starting now with, with a lot of these smaller companies. You're starting to see the pop clear out more and more people. And then eventually the people who are fed up with you know being inside in these in the investors in these businesses from the last <laughs> upturn um yeah. and eventually the stories come through and this one like n4 is starting to see a uh their story to gain track is gaining traction uh and that's you know i think that's the key and you see it elsewhere but what is the story here i don't know much about this company i've seen it yeah much. it's a bit complicated they have multiple assets uh, rnai assets so uh, rna silencing assets they also have a cell-based therapy so it's a bit of a mixed story and, and you know, the, the, it's a bit technical in every respect, but I guess the main point is their programs are advancing. One of, they put out an announcement recently there, they have um, a, a program where they're, they're trying to uh, diminish inflammation. So they have an an shown some anti-inflammatory effects of one of their programs. But I guess my main point is throughout this whole period, all of the, all of these businesses programs are evolving 
and this one, like in Enforce case, are getting they're all they're getting ever closer to clinic. Um, the other one with uh, with Rockford is I think that they have a deal in place, so that they have some commercial traction already. Um, you know, they, so even though these are early stage companies, they actually have some commercial agreements in place, uh, and and I think you know they're hoping for more. So maybe that's why these stocks are popping. You know, there there may be some anticipation of you know further further deals similar to their 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 um, first one. I think they have one with a Middle Eastern organization where they're developing programs uh, out of that, and each one each program that comes of it, you know adds positive news flow. So that's, that's the main point. And there's some commercial terms there. Um, but I guess my main point is that all these companies are, they're still around, they're developing, they're continuing to develop. Some are striking early agreements, uh, like in Rockford's case. And it's just a matter of time before people realize that, you know, their sub 5 million market cap businesses shouldn't be worth that. And that's, yeah. you know, that's, I think at some point it'll happen. And the other thing just about their ability to refinance, it's been pretty, these smaller companies have been pretty cash efficient and able to do quite a bit on little cash. That's why they're still mm. around. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned when it comes to the stage when the bull market really kicks in and, and, and raising money becomes a lot easier. Uh, they, they're all more, become more more efficient companies, you know, because they have yeah. to. They're to bootstrap it pretty much. But I mean, hopefully the drop will, you know, the, the end of the drop will settle a bit higher than the, the previous low, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And uh, Cambridge we're, Coalition's we're... gone through. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah so, go ahead. Yeah, Cambridge is another um, one you should look well, at. I mean, they're, they're doing quite well. At Brooks, right? They've turned the company around. They've cut costs. Uh, they, you know, looking, and then all of a sudden, the, the, the CEO just unexpectedly steps down, which is annoying. Yeah. And then, uh, but they've announced some news out yesterday, didn't they? That, that one of their spin offs um, is, is doing well, isn't it, or something? Yeah, so they put out uh, one of their holding, they hold uh, oh, yeah. a company called Monument Therapeutics, which is exactly what, you, as you said, it was a spin out. Um, mm. I can't remember what their percentage holding is, but it's it's significant. It's 20 odd percent, I think. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, it's a significant stake. 22.1%, um, yeah. Yeah, there you go. And uh, that business is now valued at 8 million because they got a 1 million pound investment from for some um, non-governmental organization, so a uh, charity. Um, but it's one of these, you know, health health charities that's well properly funded. So, the, you know, it puts a kind of line in the sand as to what that um, what the valuation of that holding is, and it's a positive. I mean, you know, that that means Monument can do more things, can evolve, you know, their business. And you'd like to think that that eight million, I think, is the valuation. It's valued at eight million, eight point three five. There you go. You have it right there. Um, so if you take twenty two percent of eight point three five, so that's another stake. You can deduct that from. Uh, Cambridge Cognition's valuation because, or at least it gives you some idea of what that valuation is of that holding. Yeah, well, I did read the brokers. I think I, was, I think it was, well, was he on. I don't know who he was, but I mean, it's something like they, they, they've ten bagged now on that investment, <laughs> some that, so, or some of that. So that's quite good, isn't it? So um, well, and they haven't yeah. crystallized it yet, and you know, there's always yeah. risk with that, right? Because it's still a private company. But you'd like to think again. You know, these this is the way the way these things work in time. Should the markets improve, and you know, at, we're moving towards that slowly. Um, there, there might come a time when that company is either sold or listed. You know, yeah, yeah. and and it would probably be, you know, given where we are today, at a higher, ever higher valuations. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They're they 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 they're still forecasting, you know, um, an uplift or you know, flat but uh, improving the costs. Of, they've cut massively recently, haven't they? So hopefully they're going to be headed towards profitability. Uh, they got they got some cash as well. You know? Yeah, I mean, look, this one it has its it it comes with its warnings when the CEO leaves. So you know, there's always yeah. some concern there, right? Um, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, uh, you, you know, we would like to see some clarity on that and see that. Yeah, and that's evolve. annoying. I, I've said before, yeah. it's happened to me before. I, you know, I mean, in fact, Destiny Farm, which is now delisted. But, um, you know, that they, you just step down, no explanation. And I think sometimes uh, it often happens as well, and it can happen. When a, when a, when a, when the CEO is just a managing CEO comes in and does something, uh, to avoid that as risk in my mind is always look for skin in the game. If a yeah. CEO is significant skin in the game or was a founder of the company, they're very unlikely or less likely to step down and just leave. You know, you read yeah. one RNS one morning and the CEO is gone. That's less likely to happen if they own the company, founded it, and they got or, or they have a big chunk of skin in the game. You know, so yeah, um, yeah. Well, know. I uh, like. Just to tell you what I've done, I've sold some of my stock in this on the back of that CEO departure. Yeah. I'm not. I'm still a holder, but you know, like I sold a third about 
three years ago or whatever of my holding i sold another well another third which would be half of that on that announcement i was you know i found that well or in the weeks after um so i find that like is like you say i find that always a little bit disturbing and just the uncertainty you know yeah. You know, but I still like the company. So well, I've, kept, I've kept some. I've yeah, kept some. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a turnaround plan. You think, yeah. Well, if it's going to plan, why did you just step down? It's, it's nuts. I mean, anyway, I'll be listening. You, we're late. Uh, do you want to mention <laughs> tissue regenics quickly? Yeah, or, quickly. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, j just before I go. Yeah, tissue regenics. I, like, love this business. Uh, everything mm -hmm. was is going to plan effectively. You know, their revenues are substantial. I think they're pushing thirty five million, if not higher. Um, you know. It, 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 double digit growth uh, all firing on all of their kind of divisions they have three kind of uh three revenue three sides to their revenues all of them are doing well um and break even now you know and uh effectively you know self financially self self-sufficient sufficient not like the biotech companies we're talking this is a revenue proper generating business well they put out an announcement saying that they are um in a takeover period so, but the announcement reads weird. You, you see what I mean? The, the thing that bothers me, like, A, that's fantastic. If they get taken out, it'll always be at a premium, right? So you, you just don't sell, but no shareholders would agree to a takeout at market price. Uh, it's always done at a premium. So that's moved the shares upwards recently, which I like. And I think that's a good thing. But I just, it was a weird takeout announcement. It was like they were soliciting interest from... this? This, is, this is this is one recently this is now it's fourth of november is that right or... uh yeah just just recently that. like last friday or something like that I, I, just very recent it was their last announcement i think well they've contacted a number of potential counterparties to assess whether the parties would put a, a, a so basically they haven't received them they're asking if do you want to exactly buy and i don't yeah, understand yeah. that's the bit i don't understand like why would you as in why would it be that way around and the other thing is why a strategic review so those two things, you know, on the they're both counteracting forces, right? One is takeover period is drive; it's clearly driving the shares up. Okay, so that's why the shares have been bouncing. Um, and then the question, but the, then the question is, you know, how how solid is <laughs> how solid are those takeover discussions? You know, and will they just fall away? You know, uh, mm -hmm. so so that one is a weird one. I just thought it's worth no, it's noteworthy because, um, yeah, it's a in a perfect world. We just hear, yeah, it's being taken out at a fifty percent, hundred percent, pre whatever the premium is, uh, and then we're all off to the races. It's, uh, you know, that's that's a good outcome. Yeah, I don't like those kind of strategic views. They put themselves up for sale. They're thinking, uh, I've, in this environment, it's hard to find people who want to, you know. I know. Oh, I, that's you know. it's the bit that I don't understand. Yeah. Is everything was going hunky dory, literally up to the last announcement. Everything is going yeah. to plan, and then it's a bizarre announcement. Yeah. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, listen, you're late uh, for your next date. So, um, <laughs> Vadim, thanks for that, fella. And uh, we'll speak in uh, in four weekies. Yeah, excellent. Good stuff. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Right. Speak soon. Bye.